Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We got a parasitic drain today on a Ford product, 2010 Ford Edge. Um, this one was referred to me by a local shop, so the owner brought it here directly and uh, he told me a bit of history on the vehicle, so let's go over that and uh, see if we can track down this parasitic drain. So the owner of the Ford tells me that this issue has been going on for almost half a year, about six months. So back in the summer, uh, he noticed that if he left the car for over a day, battery would be completely dead. Then one day he, uh, he heard a horn blaring and he found out it was his own vehicle. The Ford was just blaring its horn like constant. Meh. So he pulled the fuse for the horn out of the uh, interior fuse box, the smart junction box, and he said he's gone through three batteries already in six months because if the battery is fully depleted and then you jump start it and it gets fully recharged, that's not good for batteries. We all know that. The alternator is still original, which is impressive. So he says if he drives it every day, the car still starts. It's you know it's sluggish, but if he leaves it for more than a day battery is completely dead. So that's all I know about the uh, the vehicle. He said there are no warning lights. It drives great. Um, so only the horn is the only clue that we have so far. So uh, let's do some preliminary checks. So when the car came in, standard procedure, did a pre-scan. So there are 10 codes total stored in the vehicle. ABS, smart junction box, and airbags. Let's see what those are. So ABS says satellite ECU is faulty, and that is the uh, the unit that has the yaw rate, roll rate, accelerometer. It's a separate um, little module. But these are all history codes because the ABS light wasn't on. There are no traction control, you know, warnings or anything. Um, smart junction box just says battery voltage low. Yes, uh, that makes sense. And then the uh, airbag says missing communication with APIM, Accessory Protocol Interface Module. And then some kind of uh, occupant classification system error, front passenger side. Again, airbag light is not on, so these are history codes. And battery voltage high, battery voltage low. That's all we have. So no red flags like, um, if you remember that Lincoln... Uh, we did a couple of years ago with uh, Josiah at um, Blue Skies Mobile Auto Repair. Uh, that one, the uh, was it the RTM, the uh, radio transceiver module, actually had a code that says configuration error, and that one that module just went nuts. It was causing the whole vehicle to stay alive. So um, let me. So the vehicle's asleep right now, as asleep as it can be. It's been here for a few hours. And I have a charger on it. Let's just see how many amps approximately it's drawing. So the Tornado 90,000 has been on here for maybe four hours. The battery's fully charged. But you can see the amperage is not zero. 1.5 amps. And it's been there for a long time. So that means there is some kind of parasitic drop. You can see the battery terminals look a little scary. And what I want to do right now is just throw an amp clamp on the wire that goes from the battery positive to the battery junction box. That's the underhood fuse block right here. So let's just see if we can measure any substantial current. Re-zero the clamp. Clamp it around here. About 0 0.6 amps. Now let's keep watching it. See it went up in the kind of 0 0.6. Steady, 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 steady. And after about 10 seconds, it drops to like 0.3 and back to 0.6. So that tells me that some module is not falling asleep, or is trying to fall asleep and then wakes right back up. All right, let's take a look at a few wiring diagrams. First, the horn diagram. So we know there's a problem with the horn. Um, so smart junction box, there's a fuse. <clears throat> 
it feeds both the control and the load side of the horn relay non serviceable that's uh it's just soldered onto the circuit board i guess in the smart junction box clock spring so there is the steering wheel buttons there's the horn itself pretty simple circuit and right here don't miss this micro so this horn can be switched on either by the steering wheel buttons or for example if you press the panic button the smart junction box can also energize this internal relay keep that in mind so let's say if there's a short circuit and then boom this relay is always latched yeah that would cause a parasitic drain for no reason um, so the owner pulled this fuse right here F2420 amp I haven't looked at it yet um, but let's hook up the scope to um, to our networks so this is our DLC and it looks like we just have power ground there's a dedicated PCM line right there and then here's what we want high speed can is pins 6 and 14 that's classic layout and then medium speed is on pins 3 and 11 so I want to get channel 1 on pin 6 high speed CAN plus and channel 2 on pin 3 which is medium speed CAN plus and see if there's activity on both networks or just one network alright so I have the breakout box connected down there so we don't have to fiddle with pins I don't want to open the door or anything and then two channels pin 6 and pin 3 and the ground is right here on chassis ground so here's the Pico here's what we have at the moment just flat line no activity whatsoever so that's interesting didn't really expect that if you want to make sure that your scope leads are actually you know making a good connection you can always go to battery positive and you can see we're at 13 and a half volts that drops down back to pin 6 and then pin 3 I'm going to attach it to there we go so our scope is good it's telling the truth we're at zero both lines are at zero volts so let's look at our amp draw again about 0.7 is it fluctuating at all 0.75 steady 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 0 0.6, 0 0.7, it's not dropping down to 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so something's going on with some module, but it's not waking up other modules on the network. Okay? So, that's, a, um, that's interesting, so what do we do next? We can try to use a thermal camera on the fuse boxes, measure voltage drops, you know, old school parasitic draw checks. All right, let's go after this smart junction box. It's right here. I took the cover off. You can see the fuses. Um, it's a little dirty on the floor. Let me clean this out so we can get in there and do, um, do some voltage drop checks on those fuses. Yeah, that's a little better. So, smart junction box, visual inspection. I don't see any green crusties or wa obvious water intrusion or anything. Okay. Uh, fuse 24 for the horn. Where would that be? This one right here. So it's going to be one, two, three up in the middle row. Sure enough, that's missing. There's an empty slot. And this one must be it right here. So let's pop it in, see if the horn blares. Nope, horn is not on at the moment. Should we get a thermal camera on this thing and see if anything's warm? By the way, let's make sure the horn works. It does, normally. So right now it doesn't have the weird... Uh, you know, blaring horn like the customer uh, said. So it looks like the car is asleep like it was before, about half an amp draw. We could do a more precise measurement 
with an in-series meter we know there's about half an amp right here and the <clears throat> question is where is it going? Is it going to the smart junction box? Well, we have we do have a few fuses in here and in the wiring diagram for power distribution this 100 amp mega fuse which is this guy right here that's the one that goes to the smart junction box. So actually, what we could do is just measure this wire right here. If we re-zero the amp clamp, is the current going to the smart junction box? Yes, it is. It says 0.7, so you know the accuracy here is just based on position. See if it's 0.1, re-zero it again. No, 0.6. Yes. So the current's definitely going to the smart junction box, so we have to focus our troubleshooting there. Okay, first thing, I just want to use the top down TC view thermal camera on the smartphone to take a quick visual inspection of the smart junction box. And what I was seeing is there is a slight warm spot. It's going to be hard to catch on camera because of this brake pedal. You see that warm spot right there? Well, it's a couple degrees warmer than ambient. Right there. That's very suspicious. So is the box itself just drawing current? That's uh. I'm gonna check the voltage drops on all of these fuses. But, you know, I'm suspecting that the smart junction box itself is going nuts or something's wrong internally and it's just drawing current all the time and that's the only thing that could energize the horn without pushing the steering wheel buttons so that's a suspicion but let me do some voltage drop checks on all these fuses all right that took about 15 minutes voltage drop check on all the fuses and there was one that wasn't zero Fuse F39 20 amp 1.7 millivolts. That's the one right here at the bottom. 39. It's a 20 amp fuse. So I'll focus you guys in on the meter and the fuse so we can document this. There and there. About 1.7 millivolts. All right, well that's interesting. Let's see what fuse F39 feeds on the wiring diagrams. All right, on power distribution in the smart junction box, fuse F39 20 amp audio control module. That's the only thing on that fuse. And I did notice that the radio didn't work and the display is really messed up. <laughs> okay. If you put the thermal camera on here and see if it's warm, we could do that. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> this thing's uh, over 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that was kind of a giveaway. I should have uh, pointed the thermal camera on that. It feels a little warm. You can actually see the light is slightly lit up. Is this thing illuminated? Do you see it's like zzz, zzz, zzz. oh well let me take a picture of that for the owner and before pulling that fuse out yeah it's messed up let's uh, hook up the in-series ammeter to know exactly what our parasitic draw is right up here so right now we're at you know, 0.6 or whatever let's um, hook it up to this wire right here so we'll go from battery positive to here we'll unscrew this one because I don't want to mess with the crusty terminals just yet and then we'll have battery positive feed going through the in-series meter to the smart junction box We'll have an accurate milliamp reading. We'll pull the fuse and see if that reading drops to, you know, 10 milliamps or whatever. Okay, so to uh, make this 
foolproof. I don't want to wake the car up and cut power to the, you know, everything and then re, uh, re-energize it. So what I did was I put the charger on this post, kept the charger on, disconnected the positive battery post, connected my in-series meter between battery positive and the terminal. Now, we have, you know, we have minus 0.7, so the charger is charging the battery 0.7 amps. Now if we turn the charger off, we should have There we go. There's our draw. 620 milliamps and you can see it's, you know, fluctuating. So that's the real time number right now. Now let's go pull that fuse to the radio and see if this drops to something reasonable like 10 milliamps. So this uh fluctuation is when the radio illumination goes on and off so it's definitely correlated let's go pull that fuse number 39 20 amp right here right now it's definitely that one so let's pull this guy out so illumination on the radio is off. Let's see what a parasitic draw went down to. Oh, I love it, nine milliamps. So that was it. Mystery solved. And now the question is, will the horn start blaring for the owner? I don't know. I'm just gonna keep the fuse in, put everything back together, um, start it up, maybe clean up that really bad battery terminal over there and let the car go to sleep. We can do another measurement, make sure it goes to, I don't see why it wouldn't fall asleep. It actually falls asleep faster than most Fords, about 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, broken radio. I don't know if it was due to the screen being mashed in or if it was breaking and someone got a little frustrated and punched it, but thermal camera definitely would have caught it if I looked at the dash with a thermal camera. I should have, but the you know, the kind of the classic voltage drop on all the fuses, that um, definitely caught the radio. We're not sure about the horn yet, but um, we'll follow up and see if that problem returns or not. All right, let's clear out all the DTCs, see if any hard faults return. So you can see our audio control module is now offline and the APIM accessory protocol interface module um, the restraints control module is fussing about that but that's it let's uh, take it for a spin park it outside and uh, you know if the horn blares overnight I'll definitely hear it okay after the test drive no codes set final parasitic draw measurement we're starting at 180 milliamps um, charger is off, ammeter is hooked up, and we're starting at 8.05, so let's check back in 15 minutes. Guys, after 10 minutes, 9 milliamps. This Ford goes to sleep very quickly. That's awesome. We're done. Battery terminals are all cleaned up. I loosened that one up so you can actually uh, use it now. The corrosion was pretty bad. Um, so we're done with this Ford. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, sometimes the answer kind of looks at you right in the face. With a the thermal camera, we could have gotten it. The radio looked busted, and it didn't work when the car was running, but didn't think much of it. Um, uh, but if we had it in the dark, we could see the illumination go on and off with, you know, coincides with the, the battery drain. Pretty crazy. So, thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.